Good evening. I'm now calling the May 8, 2017 Planning and Zoning Commission meeting to order. At this time, we'll invite Pastor Bob up for the invocation. Please stand. Our Father, we thank you for this day and this uh, wonderful opportunity to serve you. We thank you for your many blessings in our life. We thank you for the privilege of living in such a beautiful place and to serve you in this area. And we uh, pray your blessing upon the commissioners this evening and those who would submit testimony that um, in all things that you would get honor and glory. We commit this time to you. We thank you for your goodness and your grace and your love. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As I mentioned earlier, good, good evening. My name is Matt Zercher, and I'm the chairman of the Planning and Zoning Commission, and I'll be presiding over this evening's deliberations on hearing items this evening. The Planning and Zoning Commission is made up solely of appointed volunteers and sits in an advisory capacity to the town council. The commission reviews Planning and Zoning Commission issues and forwards recommendations regarding these important issues to the council. This evening's proceedings will be conducted using the following format. First, I will read the hearing application into the record. Following the identification of the hearing application, staff will present the case and their recommendations to the commission, after which questions from the Planning and Zoning Commission will be directed to staff regarding the case. After the commission initially has reviewed the application, the floor will be open for comment, at which time the applicant will have an opportunity to comment regarding the matter and answer any questions. It is at that point I will open the floor to general comments from the public regarding the planning case before the commission. I ask that you direct your pertinent comments to the commission through the chairperson and not the applicant, staff, or individuals within the audience. I would also appreciate your cooperation in making your statements brief and to the point as I may exercise prerogative to combine public comment if need be to five minute intervals per person should there be considerable public involvement in the case. Also, I would ask that you please, um, some people like to, you know, speak several times, come up to the mic several times, go ahead and just, you know, come up once and just, you know, that's what, that's that. So one time at the uh, mic, uh, at, at the podium to address the commission, please. And then also just to let you know, since we are dealing with multiple items with regard to the same uh, tract 65 A and B, I will take public comments, open the floor to public comments after we initially discuss the first item. So we'll get there in just a sec. At this time, I'd like to uh, entertain a motion. Oh, actually, this time, uh, Vicki, would you call the roll call? Sure. Commissioner Rutherford? Present. Commissioner Dreves? Absent. Commissioner Roberts? Present. Commissioner Dusky? Absent. Commissioner Yader? Here. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Here. And Chairperson Zercher. Here. If the Commission has reviewed the minutes, I would entertain a motion for the approval of the uh, minutes from the April 10th, 2017 minute meeting. I'll make the motion. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Vicki? Commissioner Rutherford? Aye. And Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. At this time, are there any announcements from staff? I do have an announcement. I need to disclose that um, I live within 300 feet of uh, this meeting's, uh, this evening's uh, hearing items. Uh, received both uh, um, town notice and notice uh, from the applicant about the, uh, about the project. I also have um, given advice with regard to the public participation process to the applicant with regard to this application. I also attended the neighborhood meeting. I did initially think that I, wouldn't, I would have to abstain from voting, but after discussing it with town staff, um, they've actually said I'm okay to vote on this application. So with that, we'll get into the public hearing items. The first thing on um, 
the slate this evening is General Plan Amendment 17-001, a request by Pronghorn Ranch Homeowners Association for a general plan amendment from low density residential to community commercial on approximately 3.5 acre portion A, as indicated on the map, or of Track 65, Pronghorn Ranch, Unit 12, located on the west side of Antelope Meadows Drive, approximately 200 feet north of Mestino Road. Presenting this evening is Mr. Joe Scott. Joe. Uh, thank you, uh, <clears throat> Chairperson. Um, <clears throat> as you mentioned, uh, there are four items here. I'm going to be discussing them together. Um, so I think I would just like to review real quickly the different items that will be uh, coming up so uh, <clears throat> we know what's all being discussed. Uh, in con uh, in, uh, also with the uh, general plan amendment is the zoning map change um, to change the uh, <clears throat> zoning from RL R1L10 PAD uh, to C3 uh, PAD minor commercial on the subject 3.5 acres and uh, <clears throat> then subject to those uh, being discussed and approved there are preliminary plans uh, for the uh, PDP 17004 for the uh, recreational vehicle storage uh, for the uh, homeowners association and uh, and also a PDP 1705, which is a request for the uh, preliminary development plan for the pool and fitness center. And uh, you can <coughs> discuss those in a little more detail as they uh, we make a motion on them. <coughs> and Joe, just to clarify, sure. you know, want to make sure everyone knows we have to take vote on these individually. And then after uh, Joe is done with his presentation and after the applicant has come up to speak, then we'll open the floor to public yeah. comment. So bring it up, yeah, because I'll be discussing them all uh, at the same time. Uh, so again, the uh, Pronghorn Ranch uh, Master Plan for 1,440 residential units along with the rezoning was approved by the Planning Zoning Commission the May 8th, 2000 meeting. It was uh, subject to a preliminary adequacy determination by the Arizona Department of Water Resources for a 100-year assured water supply. Uh, up to this time, there have been uh, 1,073 residential lots have been approved <clears throat> up to and including Unit 16. Uh, the property owners uh, have been seeking also a minor increase in the number of housing units as allowed by the Arizona Department of Water Resources to utilize the uh, full pre-declaration water allocation for Pronghorn Ranch project. As you know, at the April 10th meeting, the Planning Zone Commission approved PDP 17002 to amend portions of Unit 1 for an additional 23 lots and also approved PDP 1703 for the uh, forthcoming Unit 18, <clears throat> increasing the total lots from 110 to a maximum of 154 lots. The time of approval of the master plan, which is uh, illustrated here, uh, <clears throat> portion A of what is now tracked 65 was identified as open space, and portion B was identified as a community center. Pronghorn Ranch 12 was approved uh, April 27, 2006, which included tract 65. The property owner has indicated that uh, the RV storage, as requested, has been in <clears throat> discussions and generally planned since the project's inception, and the area was inadvertently listed as open space while the clubhouse was identified for the west portion. The planned community center and RV parking and storage area was why the previous developer, which is Brown Family Community, installed what is in place now an existing nine-foot privacy wall. Uh, and they've indicated that at the time there was no uh, charge on these lots for any kind of premium uh, because they were located next to this uh, site. Now, this is discussed later in the narrative for the uh, RV storage. Although portion A was indicated as open space in the master plan, the Prong Pronghorn Ranch zoning was approved as R1L10 PA PAD, being consistent with the general plan at the time. When the general plan 2020 was adopted in 2002, the residential property and subject property was designated as low density residential, which was later adopted by the general plan 2025. The proposed recreational vehicle storage facility 
uh, for the Pronghorn Ranch Homeowner Association members and occupants of Pronghorn Ranch on portion A, re then requires a general plan amendment and a zoning map change. Portion B of Track 65 is indicated on development plan for a new recreation center and uh, were indicated on the master plan and is allowed in the existing R1L10 PAD zoning district, subject to approval of a preliminary development plan and subsequent final development plan. In the R1L district, libraries, parks, playgrounds, and community buildings are allowed when conducted as a non-commercial basis. Again, both uh, plans will be discussed on the uh, preliminary development plan. Uh, the C3 zoning district is being requested because it allows for equipment storage, rental and sales yards, and rental storage units. RV storage is related to these uses and so is allowed in the C3 zoning so long as configured in accordance with an approved preliminary development plan and a subsequent final development plan. Rezoning of portion A of Track 65 will allow for RV storage but exclude all other commercial uses as reflected in the stipulations of approval. <clears throat> Uh, staff is recommending the community commercial designation for portion A, and that is intended to allow for both neighborhood and community serving commercial uses and provide convenience services for the local residents and surrounding neighborhood. This is also recommended in that the RV storage will be operated only for the benefit of the Pronghorn Ranch a HOA members and occupants of Pronghorn Ranch as a nonprofit association operation, and the conditions of rezoning allow only for that use specifically prohibit other industrial uses. <clears throat> been reported the neighborhood meeting regarding all th four applications uh, was held by the applicant on Thursday, March 9th, 2017, with all property owners within a thousand foot having been invited by first class mail. A list of the attendees and issues discussed or addressed in the minutes that were included in your packet. Preliminary development plans, as will be viewed as indicated here uh, for portion A and B, uh, provide the uh, necessary written and graphic information to define the proposed development and use and provide a basis uh, for the rezoning. More detailed information, including landscaping and lighting plans, will be part of a subsequent final development plan approved by the Town Council. Uh, both FPDP 1704 and 1705 are illustrated on this exhibit and I'll discuss them a little further. Uh, regarding the preliminary development plan for the RV storage on Tract A, um, it is uh, intended for uh, HOA uh, members and there's approximately 87 secured RV spaces that will be available exclusively for use by the Pronghorn Ranch HOA members and other occupants of Pronghorn Ranch. This area will be used for the parking storage of recreational vehicles, trailers, vehicles, and boats that are transported into the storage area during allowed hours. The association will receive fees from association members and occupants for the use of the facility. <clears throat> the entire inside perimeter of the RV parking will be landscaped and uh, with a buffer in order to keep recreational vehicles and other uh, vehicles from being immediately adjacent to any wall. A dump station may be provided if needed um, based on feedback from the community. Hours of operation will be coordinated by the association manager and will be set similar to the main community clubhouse hours. The project will be improved in phases based on parking and storage demand. The Arbery Storage Center has been <clears throat> discussioned and generally planned since the project's inception, even though the area was inadvertently listed as open space. As such, there is an existing nine-foot-tall masonry wall along the north and south property lines, which, would be installed, which was installed by the previous developer to protect the privacy of homeowners as a former developer planned to use this area for a community center and RV parking. The lots and homes that abut the property were not charged a premium and were priced lower by Brown family community because of the non-optional nine-foot privacy wall that was installed at the time. <clears throat> the wall is intended to provide privacy and noise and view abatement from the planned clubhouse and RV storage. The remainder of the perimeter wall will be completed uh, <clears throat> with, the com with the project is developed. In, patient, in anticipation, uh, based on some of the community uh, uh, outreach meeting, um, there were some uh, four viewpoint neighbors uh, who maybe didn't want uh, to look at a nine foot wall and the association has planned on possibly adding an evergreen hedge uh, as an additional, additional buffer for those homeowners if uh, required. 
Proposed RV storage area will be lowered by four foot from the existing grade to ensure that adjacent homeowners will not be able to see the tops of RVs while standing in their backyards. The site is not part of any floodway, and after being lowered four feet, the site will continue to drain properly according to approved engineering plans for the project. The site is served by existing water and uh, sewer available to the site. And lastly, the uh, Plumber Development Plan 705 for the pool and fitness facility. Uh, the recreation area in the north portion of Prongon Ranch will consist of a pool and clubhouse fitness facility on approximately two acres on uh, portion B of Track 65. Uh, facilities will be for use by Pronghorn Ranch Homeowner Association members and occup occupants of Pronghorn Ranch. The pool will be completely fenced with key card access for members and occupants only, and the hours will be set in accordance with and by the Pronghorn Ranch Clubhouse Manager. The fitness clubhouse facility will be accessible 24 hours by key card to members and occupants. The open areas around the pool and clubhouse fitness center will be for future amenities such as horseshoe pits, bocce ball, pickleball, tennis, barbecue area, kids play areas, splash pad, and more. The site will be developed and landscaped in accordance with town standards. Portion B, again, was uh, originally shown in the master plan for a community center and is allowed in the R1L10 zoning district. So <clears throat> with that, we'll uh, I'll review and make, uh, we'll start with a general plan amendment and uh, make a ask for a motion on that and then we can take uh, some comments so staff observes that the applicant has met the town code requirements for neighborhood or outreach and that the requested general plan amendment and zoning map change for portion a and a preliminary development plan on track 65 are appropriate at this location and again we'll be asking for a separate motion on each one <clears throat> first for general plan 1701 staff suggests the designation of portion a is appropriate and that it's intended to allow for both neighborhood and community serving commercial interest and that the uh, RV storage along with trailer vehicles and boat storage will be operated only for the benefit of the Pronghorn Ranch Homeowners Association members and occupants of Pronghorn Ranch. And is also a nonprofit association operated uh, and the conditions for zoning allow for only this use and prohibit other industrial uses. So with that, staff supports the request and ask commission to make a motion to approve GPA 17001. Uh, with that, I'm available for questions and the applicant is also here and I think has a little additional information to add. Thank you, Joe. At this time, does anyone from the commission have any questions of staff? I have none. I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. At this time, I'd ask the applicant to uh, come up. Go ahead and uh, state your name. Go ahead and uh, speak into the mic and state your name for the record, please. Uh, uh, good evening, Honorable Chairperson and Honorable Commission. Uh, Cassandra Shuffler and myself, Ben Snyder, are here as the applicants and the representatives of Pronghorn Ranch Homeowners Association. And we can answer your questions. We also uh, prepared a video uh, to display for you. Um, would you like to do the video first and then ask questions? Okay. <laughs> Go for it. <clears throat> okay, so there's music that goes with it, but I guess we're not going to have the music. So what we have is a nine foot wall, as Joe explained, uh, probably 80% of that wall is in because the entire southern boundary and northern boundary is installed. So the remaining ends needed to be tied in. Uh, but the nine foot wall was always planned to create that, as mentioned, the, the privacy uh, and provide the screening for sound and, and the visual uh, enclosure. What you see here is, um, it's a, it was a pretty quick, it's a quick video, uh, showed the RV area, now we're going into the fitness center, the clubhouse, and this will be a 24-hour facility uh, abutting the pool. 
and the other recreational uh, facilities as the video takes us outside. And obviously, these are animations. Uh, they are based on plans that have been designed, so it's fairly accurate and pretty close to what we, we uh, representative of what we plan to do. I'm assuming you can see that, but okay. We have it. Okay. The members and occupants of the association really enjoy the new pool we added a few years ago by the main clubhouse. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we found uh, that the members of the association really enjoy the fitness facility and additional pool that we added three years ago by the existing clubhouse. And this is um, similar to what we did there as uh, the growth has taken us to a higher demand for pool and recreational facilities. Did it stop? <laughs> <laughs> well, we're, I think we we're just about at the end. Um, okay. That's good. That's good. All right. Does anyone have any questions of, of the applicant? I do. Did she do this? Uh, she was responsible oh, okay. for, for hiring. <laughs> normally, normally, the girls do this a lot better than, than oh. us guys, <laughs> except for Matt. Matt's, Matt's a communicative guy. <laughs> He's really good with that stuff. No, because Sandra hired um, uh, a local architect, Tom Terry, to help us okay. with that. Okay. Okay. I'm actually the HOA manager for Prom Oh, Ranch. okay. I'm, I noticed in um, when I was at the property that the area where the uh, RV storage is going to be, it looks like it's uh, several feet higher. And you mentioned in uh, Joe's presentation that that's going to be lowered. Um, can you give us an idea of how that's going to work and how that's um, going to come about? Yes. So once we begin construction, that'll be the first step is to follow our grading and drainage plan, and that will lower the entire site approximately four feet and make it slightly higher than the Antelope Meadows Parkway that you drive by on. Oh, okay. Um, what's ETA? Uh, as soon as we get your approval and the, and the council approval, we'll, we'll move forward. Okay. Is it in your plan the um, uh, the wall that separates the uh, RV storage from the recreational center area um, is a, um, a future? Will that will that be done um, um, as as the storage is started to use so that the people coming up Antelope Metals won't won't be able to see the RV storage? Cor correct. So part of phase one of construction would complete the entire wall for both uh, screening and security. Any other questions? I just got a comment. Go for it. You did a great job. It shows a lot of good quality. It really does. Thank you. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. At this time, we will open the floor to public comment. Um, if When you um, come up to the microphone, please state your name and your address for the record, please. Uh, Anyone wishing to address the commission? Just signify by raising your hand. Okay, sir, in the blue sweater. Glenn Brower, 8415 North Sable Way, Prescott Valley. Brand new residents of Arizona. I have a question as far as cost. I understand that in some developments, and we have one in Pronghorn, we have a park that is called the City Park. Is that correct? That is correct. There's a is that, park was that is that maintained by the city? That is maintained by the town, yes. Okay. In portion number B, that is only going to have access to HOA members of Pronghorn, with my understanding. Is the city going to the cost burden the cost of that part of it and maintain it or not? I I, I can answer that question. Just you know you know. Uh, Joe's nodding and so forth. The town will not be maintaining any part of portion B. But how about the initial cost for developing? There's no cost to the town. Okay. So in the previous times that when you have put in parks in different HOA developments, you did burden the cost to install. Is that correct? The only 
the only park that's in Pronghorn, just like there's a park in Viewpoint. Yes. So Viewpoint, Prong and Prong, Viewpoint Park and Pronghorn Park are entities of the town. The town park, Parks and Rec, uh, handles those. Well, when you say an entity, you're saying that is not your property. Is that your property, or has that been have, give, donated to you? I'll, I'll have Joe further okay. get, get in, answer that for you. Uh, the parks that are what you call public parks uh, <clears throat> were developed as part of development agreements or requirements for the subdivision to develop a certain amount of public park area, in which case the uh, developer was obligated <clears throat> to develop those parks and then, after the, and then turn them over to the town after they were done, so it, they didn't involve any cost to the town. Those required by the developer and then dedicated to the town. Does that answer your question? Y yes, it does. Um, um, my other thing is that when I looked at that area and I noticed I thought it was in the floodplain, but Joe mentioned something that it isn't in the floodplain. So basically, if there is a control, there's a uh, retention area on the other side of the street, is that correct? Yeah. yeah. That retention yes. area on the other side of the street is not accumulated from this parcel at all? Any f overflow from this? I'll, I'll invite the applicant back up in just a few minutes and he can you know, address that question. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any other, any other questions, sir? While you're up here? <laughs> Uh, no, but uh, like I said, we're brand new to this uh, Arizona residence, and uh, what I've seen, I went through one brief election with you people, and you're all doing a great job. Well, welcome to Prescott Valley, sir. Thank you. Next, who else would like to address the commission? <clears throat> yes, my name is uh, Richard Saworski. Uh, 7794 East Lavender Loop in Pronghorn and uh, just wanted to uh, state that I'm very much in favor of uh, this development. I uh, currently have an RV that I uh, have to store um, probably about 20 miles away and it would be, uh, we, we use it almost every weekend and it would be very convenient to uh, have more local storage. Also, uh, we're at uh, uh, that end of the development and we have about a mile walk uh, down to the existing uh, recreational facility and uh, having a facility much closer to us would uh, would be beneficial so I'm in favor okay. okay thank you thank you anybody else sir I, the, and gentleman in the red hat thank you my name is Ralph Bruno. I live at 7550 East Amber Ridge Way, right across the street from this future development. I am in, uh, not in favor of this improvement of Section A for the RV portion of the lots. My first question is, and I brought this up at the meeting we had with the residents, why in a residential area are you putting an RV parking space? Why can't you put it on the fringe of the area and not disturb residents that live around it, both Porghorn and Viewpoint? The other thing, uh, traffic increased to in and out with the RV vehicles, the safety of the pedestrian citizens and children who will be using the pool and the recreational facilities. Uh, number two, the RVs will be coming in, I know uh, from experience, I wanted to leave at 4 a.m. in the morning to get on the road to go somewhere. These people are gonna be coming in all times of the day and the night. They mentioned that they're gonna have nine foot walls and dig four feet into the property. RVs are 13 or 14 feet tall, and sometimes taller when they have an air conditioning unit on the top. So you're gonna be able to see it. They talk about the walls on the north and south side of the development built by Brown family. Those walls are not secured in the ground with foundation. 
where I live, I have do similar wall, and you go up there and you can shake that wall. So if they're going to use this and then dig four feet below that, it's going to make it weaker. Um, the other thing about the RV parking, they say they're going to pull in, park there, and then leave. Who's to say some of these people park their RV there on the weekends and start tailgating, having parties in the parking lot? They have guests that come in, and instead of using the facilities, they can use the RV. So I'm against that. Uh, and the last thing, if I think the last thing, the HOA residents of Porkhorn Ranch, they're notified by things by, like this, but they have no say-so because we have no control of what goes on there. Just Mr. Schaefer, who has the majority of the votes being the owner of most of the property until sufficient number of lots or buildings are sold. So we have no real say-so except in this type of format. So again, I'm voting against portion A of the development. <laughs> and my last question, can I get a copy of the minutes of this meeting? Absolutely. Absolutely. Where do I go for that? You would contact, after the meeting, contact staff, Vicki Anderson right there would be your point of contact. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Any questions? I'll have the applicant again come back up after we're done with public comment um, and then any, yeah. any, you know, staff if need, need be as well. Anybody else for public comment? Please come on up. Please state your name in, the, in your address for the record, please. Um, I'm Frances Bailey and I live at 8301 North Sable Way. And we've been living there a little over a year now. And we do have an RV. And for us, we have to keep our RV where we could find um, a place. And that's at Galpin Ford in Dewey. So in order to get our RV ready to take a trip, we have to go there, get a permit at Pronghorn, to bring the RV to our house, which we can only keep there two days, and get it ready to take the trip. When we come back, we've got the same problem. We can't bring it to the house without getting a permit to bring it there overnight to unload it. So for us, it would be very nice to be able to have our RV closer to home. And I don't see any problem with RVs having parties or anything like that. I think that uh, Pronghorn is, is very good about setting the precedent for what goes on in the neighborhood. And I haven't seen any negative things. I have seen a lot of RVs in our, on our street and in our area because people have the same problem that we do, trying to get ready to go for a week or a weekend. Yeah. So we were we are in favor of it actually. Questions? We're good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? <laughs> Come on up. <clears throat> Come on Cindy Stegall, 8487 North Sable Way in Pronghorn Ranch. Uh, Pretty much in favor of everything. I'm just wondering if there can be a uh, a number of the the spaces that could be covered. Uh, that would be really that helpful. That would be definitely. We'll invite the applicant back up, and he can address okay. that. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Any other public comment? Going once, going twice. All right. So the floor is now closed to public comment. Uh, at this time, we'll invite the applicant back up to address questions and uh, concerns with regard to this uh, application. What was that? Hello again. Uh, I, th I think I heard two questions pretty clearly. One was about the drainage, and, and yes, the sorry the. And again, it's Ben Snyder and Cassandra Shuffler. The drainage will go 
uh, from the site and flow downhill uh, into the drainage basin that was engineered and designed to handle this water. So this project was, was already planned for and designed to handle that water as well as other water. And then I think the second question was uh, about covered, uh, covered parking. I think I heard that question. So we are, we, we have cost estimates for, for um, covers and we will install covers based upon demand. So there seems to be a mixture of, of folks that would like the, the extra, uh, it will cost a little extra to have the covers and uh, so we'll, we'll provide uh, those based upon demand. And we've done two surveys with um, between 80 and 90 percent uh, in favor throughout the community of this project. And we have enough people on, this, on the second survey, we asked if you would put a deposit down, and we have enough people with deposits to go forward with phase, fully with phase one, maybe even phase two, just with the initial deposit co commitments that we've, we've received. Um, any, um, anything to add with, with regard to uh, the um, other comments that were made? Uh, okay, so I caught those two questions. Let's see. Um, there was a question about well, the height of the wall. And stability of the oh, wall. Okay, stability yes. of the wall. Yes, yes. So nine feet uh, plus four feet gives us uh, 13 feet. And basically what we've found is that RVs are the maximum height they could ever be with their air conditioner st sticking up on top would be 13 feet 5 inches because highways are 13, the bridges are 13, 6. You see them all over the place, 13, 6, 13, 6, 13, 6. And the fact of the matter is most of them are at least a foot shorter than that. In fact, very, very few would ever approach that height. And then the other consideration is since the people that are viewing towards these, let's say, taller recreational vehicles, if, if there are a few that are just super tall with the, with the air conditioning unit maybe hitting the 13.5 mark, they're at a ground level looking over a nine foot wall. So we're going to put and require all the th tallest ones to be in the center so that if you were standing outside of this area, you still could not see from any, from any of the four sides, you could still not see a recreational vehicle. What about wall stability? Yes, so wall stability was reinforced with extra footings for those nine foot walls as required by the engineer. So they are solid. There is dirt that's built up against them on the inside where the RV area, that's gonna be lowered, but that was already engineered when they were designed. And then um, can you address traffic? Yes, so the traffic uh, studies, which we have just updated, or uh, it's not quite finalized, but We'll be coming back to you uh, in the future. As Joe mentioned, we have some minor modifications for the build out as we're seeing a finish line to, to developing Pronghorn. But the traffic studies, uh, we just had a two day um, study done where they put the lines out and collect the, the traffic data, and it showed that we are actually 40% below what we projected and it, what the national averages are. So we actually have a much lower traffic uh, reality th than we ever budgeted for or planned for, so we're in great shape on traffic. And then one of the other concerns was um, raised about, you know, uh, having parties uh, in, the, in the RV lot. Uh, you know, uh, can you address that? Sure. Uh, Cassandra, our manager, I'll, I'll let her respond, but she, she's not gonna let that happen. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. Um, the RV storage area is going to be monitored by cameras, and then the only way in there is going to be through your access card system. So you have to have an access card to get into there. Plus it's gonna be monitored by cameras 24 seven. If there's any parties or anything like that, we'll put a stop to it for sure. And in fact, it's gonna be in our CCNRs that there's not gonna be allowed. There, it's strictly a storage area. That's all it is. Does anyone have any questions? Gary? Yeah, I had one question about, are you gonna have certain times they can go in and out of the, uh, the recreation? Because that was mentioned about different types of hours and so forth. I live in a uh, home plan development, so we have hours for our certain things. So 
Yes, so it's going to mimic the same hours as our clubhouse, which is 8 to 8. Oh, okay. And then in the summer, it's going to be 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Okay, good. Thank you. And only during those hours will you be able to access the storage facility. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Um, my question follows the the lady in back, and I apologize for not remembering your name. Um, but when different from how it is now, will uh, owners of RVs that are parked in there, will they be able to go in, um, kind of load up and unload uh, when they come back and before they go to trips, will they be allowed to do that um, where they're not occupying it, where they're just um, uh, getting the, the vehicle ready or are they still gonna have to get a permit and uh, move it to their house in order to uh, load up or unload? No permit necessary in our CCNRs. We have a two consecutive day rule, meaning it's unloading and loading purposes. So they would go to their home for two days, they would unload and load, and then they would go to the storage facility and park their vehicle. So it's basically just a storage facility. So yes, they would still be unloading and okay, unloading at their house. Any other questions? Sounds pretty comfortable to me. And then question answered, sir? Just want to make sure. Permission to ask the uh, applicant to the chair. Go for it. Um, you mentioned that covered parking you're going to have. Yes. Would it be beneficial for us to have solar panels up there to defray the cost of the operation of the pool and stuff like that? So that, that's a great question, and we are researching that right now to see if we could do that. We, we, we would definitely be open to that as long as it wouldn't create a burden to anybody else. So, so was the covered parking for the um, the RV storage or was it for the use of the uh, recreational center? No, no covered parking for the recreational center, uh, it's just for the RV parking. I'm gonna kind of, she arrived late, this, uh, this lady over here and I will allow you to definitely address and ask a question or anything like that. Please state your name for the record and, the addre and your address, please. Thank you very much. My name is Catherine McCall and I live at 8000 North Music Mountain Lane and my back fence abuts that property right there. So if anybody's gonna be impacted by it, it's gonna be me. I have come to grips with the fact that that project is going to go forward I would prefer that it not, but it's going to. I have limited concerns. Once, one, I've been told that the uh, RV parking has 11 low light security cameras. I'm very concerned about the lighting. I've been told that it will be dark sky compliant. However, the street light in front of my house is dark sky compliant and it's 30 feet tall. So I would like any and all lighting on that project to be below my nine foot wall. Without that, you are going to destroy my view of the sky, my peace and tranquility, my uh, enjoyment of the dark out there, et cetera, et cetera. The other thing I would like to see done is development of up here where uh, on portion B, there is egress that can go from North Music Mountain Lane directly to the front of this project and I would like to see that developed. The other thing is in phase three, they propose a tennis court. Now I know that tennis is near and dear to a lot of people's hearts. However, I can't live with a tennis court. The pong, pong, pong of the ball drives me nuts, but worse yet is the screech of the tennis shoes on the court. It is to me like fingernails are to a chalkboard and it can cause migraines. So I would prefer that the tennis court either not be there or that it change places with the pool and be where the pool is and bring the pool down a little bit more. Thank you very much. But my question to be answered now is how high will the lights be? Thank you. We'll have the applicant address that. Thank you. Yes, thank you for your question. So the lighting plan is is still in process. That'll be something that we, we will finalize through the staff uh, process and the uh, various departments, correct, Joe? But we will definitely take that into consideration. We don't want to destroy your your dark sky views and we appreciate, I live in Bronghorn and appreciate that as well. So we'll do everything we can to keep that from disturbing you. Yeah, 
can't we can't do that unfortunately. Well, I'm not a lighting engineer or designer, but I I can say that the, the HOA hears the spirit of your request and would like to honor that. I I just don't I just don't think I'm qualified to say heights or guarantees. Or Lighting plan, you should be at least say that no direct light, like she has street lights out there, the direct light's hitting her, but light should be able to be directed away <clears throat> so there's no direct light uh, on your property. I don't know if that's, uh, you know. Right. It yeah, I think I think that the highest the light would be would 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 be the height of the canopies, which are going to be in the center and pointed down. They're not going to be out near you. So I think I think we're going to be good. I, I just uh, it's a it's a process of working with staff and, and the engineers. Sure. As a retired electrical contractor, yes, we do have lighting that will do that purpose and will not interfere with you at all. <laughs> well, there you go. There, there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Right. Joe? I was just we uh, <clears throat> get our name information and that we review when we get some uh, a lighting plan that you uh, meet with her. And before we go to council that we, we make sure we involve you in the process to see the lighting plan before final approval, okay? All right. Any other any questions from the yeah. commission? Okay. Oh, I'll, I'll, there's. I will go ahead and go ahead and. Sure. I. So on the tennis court. Uh, Okay. Yeah. yeah please. So, yeah. so, so, as far as the the design and the layout, the tennis court is a final third phase uh, option for us. It would be difficult to to move that. However, I I think that the nine foot walls act a lot like the walls that are installed around freeway systems. They're, I mean, a nine foot wall is really really tall. And I don't think that if somebody's on the inside of, of that wall and somebody's playing tennis uh, in the middle of the property, I don't think they're going to be able to hear that tennis like you can down at the existing tennis court because it's it's blocked by the wall, which has a lot of deadening of sound effect. The sound all goes that way instead of that way. I know Commissioner Roberts does have a question, but real yeah, quick. Uh, I used to play tennis, so I don't think it's a big deal. But anyway. Um, are you going to have the screening, the canvas screening around yeah, the fence? Yes. Because that will take a lot of noise. take a lot of noise. We'll on. have that as well. So yeah. there's two screens and, and plantings as well. Thank you. And one of the other concerns that was brought up was the um, egress from Music Mountain, the breezeway there, I, I guess the you know, passage between the two walls. Do you want to address that? Yes. So I, I believe uh, – I'm sorry, what was, what was your name again? Catherine? Yeah. Catherine, uh, I believe you're talking about the drainage way that's, um, where can we point to it? Yes. So that that will be a pedestrian access for you. Is that what you want? Yes. You, that's what it's going to be. Okay, thank you. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of the applicant? Okay. Thank you. We'll be moving on. Thank you very much. At this point, um, we'll go ahead. Again, we have to take these in um, one by one. Um, any other uh, discussion or any questions uh, with regard to, we'll start with GPA 17-001, or um, I will entertain a motion. I'll entertain a motion. 
approval of um, GPA 17-001. Second. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, Vicki. Commissioner Rutherford? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. Zoning map change 17-001. Uh, again, any questions or further comment? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Commissioner, I'd like to make a motion for approval of ZMC 17-001 uh, with the conditions uh, that staff put forward. Is there a second? I'll second. <laughs> Which one of you wants to go on record? <laughs> Whatever Vicky gets, I'll second it. <laughs> he gets the second? You want the second? I'll take the second. Oh, okay. <laughs> since, you, since you guys both spoke up at the same time. <laughs> All right. Okay. Commissioner Rutherford? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Commissioner, or Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. All right. Preliminary Development Plan 17-004. Any questions or further comments? All right, seeing none, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve PDP 17-004 with conditions and send on to the council. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? All right, Vicki. Okay, Commissioner Rutherford? Yes. Commissioner Roberts? Yes. Chair per, or Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. All right, last one, preliminary, de preliminary development plan 17-005. Again, any questions or comments? All right, seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. Commissioner, I'd like to make a motion for approval of PDP 17-005 with the conditions put forth by staff. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All right, seeing none, Vicki. Okay, Commissioner Rutherford. Yes. Commissioner Roberts. Yes. Commissioner Yader? Yes. Vice Chairperson Rankin? Yes. And Chairperson Zercher? Yes. At this time, I'll ask Vice Chair uh, Rankin to do the call to public. Uh, the call to public is for consideration of discussions of comments from the public not already uh, discussed here this evening. Those wishing to address the Planning and Zoning Commission need not request permission in advance. Action taken as a result of public comment will be limited to directing staff to study the matter or rescheduling the matter for further consideration and decision at a later date. Uh, is there anyone that would like to address the Commission? All right, seeing none, we will close call to the public. At this time, the final item is adjournment. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. All right, so Artem made it. I'll have you second, okay? Okay. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.